Internet, welcome back to my little corner of the world. If you're new here, hi, my name's Allianne. I'm a professional actor, dancer, and choreographer here in Ottawa. And I also happen to have a day job working for the government. This channel is all about taking you behind the scenes on my many acting, dancing, and aerial hoop adventures. If that stuff interests you, you should definitely subscribe to this channel. I try to post as regularly as possible, and I've got a lot of really fun content coming your way. So today, I've got something exciting to show with the rest of the class. Um, okay, just, just, just wait here. Wait, wait, wait here. A few moments later. I bought a hoop! I bought my very own hoop! Meet Priscilla, everybody! <laughs> yeah, I named it. But in all seriousness, I did just buy my very first, very own aerial hoop. And I want to share all of the information that you will need in order to buy your first hoop as well. I don't know about you, but I wasn't finding too many resources on YouTube that were helping me make a decision as to what kind of hoop would be right for me. I mean, if you start looking, you'll see that like prices on these things vary quite dramatically. So hopefully this all-inclusive, very detailed guide that I have created for you will help you pick out your very first hoop and give you the details you need to find your very own Priscilla. Alrighty then. The first thing we need to talk about is what style of aerial hoop you're looking for. I don't know if you knew this, but aerial hoops don't only come in circle form. You can get a heart-shaped aerial hoop. You can get a moon-shaped aerial hoop. <laughs> you can get you can get a square-shaped aerial hoop or a cube-shaped aerial hoop, a spiral aerial hoop or whatever shape this happens to be aerial hoop. Of course, if this is your first hoop, I highly recommend that you get a traditional circle-shaped hoop. One, you're more likely to be using circle-shaped hoops when you are in classes, especially beginner classes. And two, it's a very stable shape that offers a wide variety of shapes and, and poses and moves that you can create in the hoop. This is also a reason why the circle shape is probably the most beginner friendly. So if this is your first hoop and you're doing this recreationally, definitely circle hoop is the way to go. Save the funky shapes for when you become a professional or uh, if you decide to be an avid hoop collector. The next thing you have to determine is your hoop size. Just like people don't all come in one size fits all, neither do hoops. It's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna link a couple of videos and sizing guides that you can use to determine the best hoop size for you. But the most traditional way of finding out is to sit on the floor with your legs straight out and your body nice and tall. Find how long your torso is from the tip of your tailbone to the top of your head and then add about this much, like a, a I think it's six inches, I thought this was six inches. It's three. Someone clearly was lying to me. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> A few inches later. But I'm gonna link the videos. I'm gonna put the number of inches that you're supposed to add on top of your measurement uh, right here on the screen. It's, it's very, very easy to do. If it's helpful to you, I'm just under five foot six. I would consider myself a little bit on the longer torso side and I ordered a 95 centimeter or 37 inch diameter hoop, which I believe is a relatively standard size uh, given that the average size of the human being on this planet is about five foot five. Likely if you fall between the five foot four and the five foot seven range, you're probably going to get a similar sized hoop to me. Hello Internet, yes, it's me coming from a slightly different corner of the world and hopefully with a little bit of a better audio swap. I really apologize for that. I'm working hard on fixing it for future videos. I really wanted to get this video out for you guys. This video could not be a complete and highly detailed guide on how to purchase your perfect aerial hoop if I didn't talk about tabs, which I totally forgot to record. Um, 
when I first did this video. Oops. So what's a tab? Well, a tab is the little metal circle bit that is at the top of your hoop where you can hang your strap from. There are three options when it comes to tabs. You could go tabless, which is the most versatile form of aerial hoop because you can tie the straps both ways. You can have a single strap span set or a double strap span set on a hoop without tabs. You could also go for a single tab hoop, which is where you have one tab at the top of the hoop where you hang your span set. This is the type of hoop I have. The reason why I purchased it, quite frankly, is because that's what we were using in our aerial hoop classes. So because I was training already on a one tab hoop, that's what I decided to go for. A uh, double tab hoop, really, really neat, super sturdy, great for beginners, great for people who are doing a lot of drops and rolls. The least versatile option, however, because with a tabless hoop, you can tie it both ways and you can technically MacGyver a way of having a double strap hanging from a single tab hoop as well. The reason why you can't hang a double tab hoop from one single tab is because when you're doing all of your moves, there's gonna be an extra tab in the way. I don't think it would be quite pleasant to accidentally hook your leg or whack your leg or your back or whatever into a tab on a hoop. Like that sounds like a whole other level of pain and danger. Ah. 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 My personal recommendation to you would be to get whatever style of hoop you're already practicing on in class. There are certain moves that you can do on a single span set that you can't on a double. Same with the double span set versus the single. There's no industry standard when it comes to tabs, so it's really up to your personal preference in terms of what you end up getting. So now that we know what shape of hoop and what size of hoop we want, we also need to pick what we want our hoop to be made out of. I would personally only trust hoops that are made either of aluminum or aluminium, depending on where you're from, uh, or steel. <laughs> Those two materials, strong enough to hold up a human being up in the air. Anything else? Questionable. That's suspicious. There are pros and cons to both. Aluminum tends to be less expensive and a little bit lighter weight, whereas stainless steel tends to be more of an industry standard. It's a lot sturdier. Um, it bruises your skin a lot more. Hoops can also either come hollow or solid. A hollow hoop is lighter weight, obviously. Uh, something that is solid all the way through ha is denser. It's gonna weigh more but it tends to be sturdier and the extra weight can be a benefit if you're big into doing uh, rolls or drops onto your hoop. Having that solid bit of weight helps keep the hoop stable uh, up in the air and prevents swinging when you're doing those big crazy drop moves. Hollow hoops or lighter weight hoops tend to spin faster and they don't hurt as much when you accidentally knock into them because there's less weight, less chance of bru I mean, you're still gonna bruise, but it might not look as bad. And you also have to think about the diameter of your hoop, as in the thickness. If you decide to go for a thick boy hoop, you likely will get less bruising and the hoop will feel more comfortable when leaning on pressure points on your body. That's a thick ass ball! A thin boy hoop, I mean, that they hurt. They definitely hurt more. Uh, but because you can put more of your hand around a thinner hoop, you'll actually have a more stable and a tighter grip. Another factor to consider when choosing your hoop is whether or not it's powder coated. A powder coated hoop gives you enough grip that you do not need to tape your hoop. The hoop is coated in the same type of coating that you would find on a pole. You know, like for pole dancing? Yeah. At the studio that I practice at, the hoops are powder coated and uh, 
I am a sufferer of clammy hand syndrome, and no matter how much dry hands that I use, I find myself slipping. Of course, you can always tape over your powdered hoop. Taping your hoop is gonna give you a little bit more grip. It might snag on your clothes a little bit, and uh, I've definitely fallen victim of tape burn on my back and arms, uh, but the extra grip is something that I personally really like. I really enjoy uh, the safety and the secureness that I feel when I am in a taped hoop over a powdered hoop. If you decide to omit the powdered coating, you definitely will need to tape your hoop no matter what. Unfortunately, without the powder, the hoop is just gonna be too slippery to use. It's not safe. Safety first, guys. Stay alert, stay safe. Now it's time to talk about accessories. And no, I don't mean shoes and handbags. I mean the things that you're gonna need to hang your hoop up in the air. The first thing you're going to need is a stand set, also sometimes referred to as a strap. The span set is what your hoop is going to dangle off of. Now, span sets come in a variety of lengths and widths. I know a lot of girls like to use the straps for rock climbing as their span sets, which can actually, they're thin enough that you can loop them here and skip putting a carabiner here. So you can, you can loop it straight onto your hoop. So if you happen to be in a rock climbing store, definitely grab some rock climbing straps because you can totally use them on your hoop. Now you want your strap to be a circle strap, uh, regardless of whether or not you're hanging it from a carabiner or straight from your hoop. It's also worth checking the tag to see how much your span sets can carry in terms of weight. This one in particular can carry one ton. Wow. Same goes for your carabiners. You want to make sure that they can withstand a lot of weight and pressure. You want to feel safe up there, right? It's very important to get proper carabiners from an aerial sports equipment provider or from a rock climbing place. You also want to make sure that you're getting the same material for your carabiners as your hoop. So if, you're, if you mix and match your metals for your carabiner and your hoop, they're gonna rub together and whatever's made out of aluminum is going to start to deteriorate and weaken. You don't want that to happen. So if you buy a steel hoop, make sure you're buying steel carabiners, vice versa. A really fun optional accessory for your hoop is a swivel. The swivel is what's going to permit you to spin on the hoop from one axle point. If you want, you can actually double swivel and then that allows you to get a lot more velocity and a lot more speed when you're doing your turns and your spins. I personally love the feeling of spinning, so this is like a vital piece of equipment. I highly recommend if you are also a fan of the spins, uh, of getting yourself a swivel. And of course, if you don't have a powdered hoop or you are deciding to tape your hoop, regardless of whether or not it's powdered, you're going to need some aerial hoop tape. The tape that I have on Priscilla here is from Aerial Essentials. It's their premium bar tape. The shipping's kind of expensive to Canada. I highly recommend that you bulk order your tapes. You'll have them for a while. They offer a huge variety of colors. Uh, I know that Emma, Katie, and Rebecca and I, we want to split an order soon. And yes, I'm aware, Emma, I owe you some green hoop tape. So when I ordered my hoop, I also ordered some snake tape from Prodigy. It's offered by Fire Toys. This is tape specifically for hoops. It does kind of look a little bit like hockey tape, but one reason to potentially avoid taping your hoop with hockey tape is that Hockey sticks typically aren't made out of aluminum or stainless steel, so the adhesive hasn't been tested with those types of materials and could leave a sticky residue that could be really hard to wash off of your hoop. You know that this is built to last on your hoop. You know that this is built for its intended purpose for being an aerial artist. 
and uh, it's what makes me feel safer. While I obviously haven't tried this one out, the one thing that I will uh, mention is that it appears that the Prodigy snake tapes come in brighter, bolder colors. So depending on what kind of colors you like or any colors that you're specifically looking for for a specific project or performance, keep that in mind, I guess. There's a really, really cool bright lime green that I'm pretty, I've seen on TikTok uh, and I'm pretty sure it's the Prodigy green tape and it's a really bright neon color and that looks like it would be fun. While there are tons of really, really great taping tutorials on YouTube, some of which I used when I was learning how to tape my hoop, I'm going to need to change up the tape on my hoop eventually and when that happens please let me know if you'd be interested in a taping tutorial because I'm totally down to share some of my secrets and tips and tricks that I've learned. Uh, my instructor has given me some really really good tips uh, that I'm super I would be super excited to share with you guys too. So now that you've picked your hoop shape you've got your hoop size, your diameter picked out, what type of hoop you have, you can now think about where you're going to hang your hoop. Obviously, if you are planning on using your hoop inside your house, uh, there are a couple of options. You can either get someone who is a professional to install a rig in your ceiling. I repeat, please, please get a professional to help you with this if this is the, the route you decide to go on. Um, you don't want the hoop to be hung off of the ceiling from a point that isn't capable of holding up your weight. You don't want to fall, you don't want to ruin your house, your ceiling, your body. Like it's not worth it. Get a professional. It will, it's worth it. Like even if it's a thousand bucks, it's worth it to get a professional to rig your ceiling so that you can hang your hoop from your house safely. The second option you have is to get a rig, a practice rig. Uh, they kind of look a little bit like swing sets. Uh, they typically are made out of steel and I find that they are very expensive. Personally, while I see the benefit of getting an outdoor rig, I don't know if indoor rigs are particularly necessary unless you live in really, really cold climates. Uh, they're kind of bulky, they're typically pretty heavy, they can be difficult to set up. Um, you're better off just taking your poop to your local park. I'm gonna put some footage up here of uh, me having a little practice session at the park. As you can see, I've pushed the swings off to the side and I've managed to hang my hoop up from the swing set. These swing sets are designed by park professionals to hold a, a huge amount of weight and to be very, very sturdy. So they make for the perfect rig for your aerial hoop. Pretty much every park out there has a swing set, so it's a pretty accessible, and uh, the little kids love it. You'll feel like a park star. <laughs> Even your basic man in the moon looks so impressive to a four-year-old. And you get to do some really fun activity outdoors. Right now, here in Ottawa, the leaves are starting to change color, and it's, it's starting to look really, really beautiful, and the weather's still pretty mild. I, I'm thoroughly enjoying taking my hoop out uh, evenings and weekends and getting some practice time in. If you do decide to go to the park, another little accessory that I find incredibly useful is a little step ladder. Uh, it just to help you get up to the top of the swing set. Before I was borrowing my dad's step ladder, I was using the swings to get myself up there and I was twisting the swing and then hoisting myself up to grab the top of the swing set to swoosh my span set over the top bar and then I would do the whole process again but with the hoop to like get the carabiner on and with the hoop and it's kind of heavy and awkward frankly I don't I don't know why I wasn't using a step ladder earlier and they're really really easy to find you can find them at Home Depot Canadian Tire if you're more of an online shopper I'll leave the link to a really good one you can get on Amazon below Cinderella lived with her wicked stepmother and her two wicked step ladders 
Step ladders for the win. It's step ladders. Now some of you might be wondering which hoop I ended up purchasing and how much it was. Well, hoops do vary a lot in prices. You can get them starting around $200 and they climb all the way up to like over a grand. Lots of factors go into the price and it's really up to you to determine what's going to fit into your budget and what's worth it to you. My hoop is a prior fitness 95 centimeter, 37 inch diameter stainless steel hoop. Uh, they offer it in black onyx or stainless steel in terms of color. I got the stainless steel. It's powder coated. It's got the easy grip. It's only 25 millimeters uh, in diameter. And it already came with the carabiners, span set, and swivel. So that I already had the peace of mind knowing that all of the pieces were going to go together and that there wasn't going to be damage from the friction points. I got my entire set for $285 Canadian. With shipping and taxes, it came to just over $300, but I just checked the Amazon listing before this video and it looks like it's on sale. So again, I'm going to leave the link below. I very, very much love this hoop. Uh, I find that it is relatively lightweight, but it feels solid and sturdy. I'm really happy I got the powder coated. It's an option if I ever don't want to tape my hoop. And I'm really grateful that it came with all of the accessories ready to go. Uh, and shipping was really, really fast. So again, if you're Canadian, not all uh, aerial equipment providers will ship to Canada. They mostly ship to the States. So definitely for the convenience, consider uh, also getting a prior fitness hoop. I, I'm honestly very, very happy with it. Highly recommend this hoop. Definitely check it out. And that, as far as I've done my research, is everything you need to know before buying your own very first aerial hoop to have and to hold and to treasure forever. I really hope you find this video helpful. Again, if you like what you see, if you want more aerial content, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button click the like button, the little thumbs up, and leave me a comment below. Maybe since I've named my hoop Priscilla, and yeah, that's, by the way, that's totally a normal thing. People name their hoops. Why don't you comment and let me know what you would name your hoop or what you've named your hoop if you've already got one. I think that would be so much fun. Okay, I can't wait to read the comments now. Of course, if I missed anything or if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. I'm gonna be checking the comments as regularly as I can. And, uh, I'm gonna do my best to answer your questions. Can't wait for us to hang next time. See what I did there? <laughs>